Okay, so I'm Fong Nguyen, and this is the, the final talk of this morning. So the title of this talk is A Subversion Resistance Dark by Bezad Abdul, Maleki, Karim Bayeri, Helger Litma, Michal Zarek <laughs> from the University of Tartu in Estonia. And as I said, this is the, the, the second article uh, invited to the Journal of Cryptology, and the, the talk will be given by Michal. Uh, hi. Uh, so, uh, two, roughly two hours ago, uh, Niki Muha uh, apologized for standing uh, between you and coffee, and now I'm standing between you and lunch, so I think I'm in a much worse situation. So, uh, thanks, you, thanks for inviting me here, uh, and uh, it's a real pleasure uh, to present you my joint work on subversion resistance NARC. Uh, so, uh, let me start with a uh, brief outline. So I will start with motivations for our work, and the motivation is the problem of uh, uh, verifiability of uh, computation. I will introduce some uh, zero knowledge notions, <laughs> and I will tell quickly what SNARKs are. Um, then I will say why subversion uh, resistant framework for SNARKs is actually important, and what could happen if, uh, if public reference strings, public reference parameters are generated maliciously. Uh, then I will go to the main part of, the, uh, of our work, that is subversion-resistant SNARK. Uh, I will show how to achieve uh, zero knowledge in the subverted setting, and this uh, will be achieved for uh, quite recent growth SNARK for QAP. Uh, um, and uh, finally, I will conclude with showing you some numbers to convince you that our, our framework, our technique is, is, is really efficient. Okay, so we can illustrate verifiable computation by uh, two, two machines. So we have a client and we have a server. And client um, maybe is like uh, not very powerful machine, but uh, it wants to compute uh, program P on some input, input X. On the other hand, we have uh, a server that has the required power and maybe has some additional input X prime that <coughs> makes uh, computation possible. Okay, so, so basically the client sends program P uh, along with public input X and the server replies with, uh, with uh, evaluation of, of this program on X, X prime, right? But of course, server needs to provide also a proof because otherwise the server could just send some random garbage and claim that that's the, that's the output. Right? So an uh, important comment is that uh, the client can actually uh, send a program once and then evaluate it on, on as many inputs as, uh, as it wants. Okay? So we represent a program as a circuit, so part of the circuit input is uh, this input given by by the client, another part is uh, is given by by the server. Okay, so how we can uh, verify the computation? So if server uh, reveal all <coughs> all intermediate values on this uh, arithmetic circuit, then the client could could just uh, run the circuit and uh, uh, verify uh, the program on its own, right? But um, in this case, we basically don't need need uh, server. So what, what if X prime is, is secret? To, to make, uh, so we need uh, to provide a correctness that, is, that doesn't reveal intermediate values, in particular this secret uh, input X prime. Right. Mm. Uh, right, so correctness is verified by showing that some relation on um, on the circuit, on wires, values hold. Uh, and there's like a natural reduction from, uh, from arithmetic circuits to, to quadratic arithmetic programs. Mm, and uh, keeping in internal secret is related to, to zero knowledge groups. Okay, so um, in zero knowledge we have two settings, interactive and non-interactive. In, in, in interactive setting, there is many messages exchanged between uh, prover and verifier, the client and the server. On the other hand, we have non-interactive setting when the server has to convince uh, the, the client that the, um, 
computations were performed uh, correctly with like one one message. Okay. So we want to to work in this setting with this single message uh, setting. It's non-interactive. So we want to uh, prove that it's non-interactive and is uh, succinct. Okay. And uh, here comes snarks. So snarks are non-interactive <coughs> proof that are that are short. So basically. Uh, the idea is that the proof itself is much shorter than, than the statement. Okay? And to get uh, non-interactive zero-knowledge, we need some uh, trust assumptions. So basically, the most popular tool is either random oracle or common reference tree. So the problem with random oracle is that it doesn't exist, but usually it makes zero-knowledge uh, proofs really, really efficient. On the other hand, we have a trusted, uh, we have a common reference string setting, where a trusted third party can generate some some common uh, common parameters, common string that would be shared between the parties. Uh, the problem with uh, this model is that uh, sometimes it's slower than than just model with random oracle. <laughs> but in case of SNARK, the situation is quite opposite. Usually snarks that are based on CRS are faster than uh, these based on random oracle. Okay, so in zero knowledge proof, we have some NP language uh, L, and we want to prove that some X belongs to, to L. So we have three, three, uh, three parties. So this uh, trusted third party in the middle, and uh, some prover that is equipped with statement X and witness W, and on the other hand, we have verifier that has only statement X but doesn't know uh, the um, witness W. Okay. And this uh, trusted third party picks some secret, uh, secret numbers uh, called uh, trapdoor and computes uh, common reference string as a function of, of this, uh, this secret. Then uh, it provides the, the CRS to the parties. So with this CRS given, the prover is able to, to give the convincing proof uh, to the verifier. In fact, in zero-knowledge proofs, we need uh, one more party. It's called the simulator. And simulator is given uh, this secret numbers, this trapdoor, and this allows him to, to simulate the proof uh, as, uh, as prover would, would do, but without weakness. And so from... Uh, so zero knowledge proofs uh, has uh, three properties. So first is completeness. So an honest uh, prover should be able to convince uh, honest uh, verifier. We have soundness. So in this setting, if uh, if prover is malicious, is not honest, and wants to convince uh, the verifier that some X belongs to the language, but that's not the case, then uh, the prover should be able to do so only with negligible probability. And the third property is zero knowledge. So we define zero knowledge by the existence of a simulator that given this secret trapdoor TS produces fake, uh, fake proof that is indistinguishable from a proof given by, by the real, uh, real prover. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in Eurocrypt 2016, Fiennes Groff proposed a snark for quadratic arithmetic programs and up to date, it's the, the fastest snark for, for, this, uh, for this relation. Uh, the proof contains only three group elements, so it's really, really short. Uh, it's based on bilinear pairings, and it's secure in both symmetric and asymmetric setting. Mm, and its sec security was shown in a generic <coughs> group model. Okay. So let's go back to our picture with, uh, with the trusted third party providing CRS in the middle. So the question is, what happens if we substitute this, uh, this party by some malicious, ma malicious subverter? Um, and this problem was, uh, was discussed uh, last year on Asia Crypt by Bellare, Fuchsbauer, and Scafuro. Mm. So in this setting, we cannot trust uh, the outputs uh, given by, by the subverter, right? And it affects, it affects CRS given to prover and verifier, and also, of course, affects 
the trapdoor given to the simulator. Okay. So let me point some problems we, we may have. So if subverter cooperates with prover, they can potentially break soundness. Right? So we need a system that remains sound even if the subverter cooperates with the prover. And this is called subversion soundness. On the other hand, the, the subverter may, may cooperate with, uh, with verifier to break zero knowledge, right? Or may give some, some <coughs> trapdoor that is not uh, well uh, formed to, um, to the simulator. So, so the simulator is not able to, to simulate anymore, right? So we need a system that remains zero knowledge even if the subverter cooperates with the verifier, and that is called uh, subversion zero knowledge. Actually, last year, uh, Belare, Fuchsbar, and Scafuro shown that it's impossible to get both. So we, we focus on uh, getting subversion uh, zero knowledge because that's, uh, we thought, like more important task for, for SNARKs. Um, so uh, as I said, zero knowledge may no longer hold because of basically two reasons. So the first is that the trapdoor given to the simulator may not be the same trapdoor uh, the subverter used to, to produce a CRS. Or maybe the CRS is just uh, not well formed, so maybe just some random bits uh, with, without any meaning. So basically we need to, to make sure that we can still uh, simulate. Okay, so, so uh, in a verifiable computation, let's uh, have, go back to this picture, uh, we still have uh, the client in the server, a uh, client sends uh, program P, but also sends uh, the CRS that will be used by, uh, by the verifier. And also is malicious and wants to learn this secret uh, X prime. Okay. So the problems, so we need to provide the simulator with a correct trapdoor, and we need to check that the CRS given to, to prover is, is well formed. Okay, let's start with the first one. So how simulation in a hostile environment look like? So, so basically we cannot trust this uh, trapdoor given by the subverter. So the idea is that the simulator will use, will ex use extractor to extract trapdoor from, uh, from subverter. Um, and in the end, the simulator will produce the very same uh, CRS as a subverter. And uh, one, we will define one simulator for all subverters. So, the simulator uses extractor to get the trapdoor, and we need uh, knowledge assumptions here. And uh, actually, this extractor can, can depend on the subverter. So before we continue, please uh, let me introduce some, uh, some notation. Um, so we, we use additive notation for groups. We have three groups, G1, G2, GT, of the same size P. And by alpha in uh, brackets with index 1, we denote an element in this group G1, and it's, well, it's element alpha times G1, where this G1 is, is the generate of the group. And similarly for group 2 and group T. We use bilinear pairings, so it's a mapping that goes from G1 times G2 to target group GT, and we denote the pairing by, by multiplication. So basically, alpha 1 times beta 2 equals alpha beta T. Okay, so uh, Knowledge uh, assumptions we use is a uh, billionaire Diffie-Hellman knowledge of exponent assumption. And it's uh, quite, quite well-known uh, assumptions if you work with, with knowledge <coughs> assumptions. So basically, uh, we allow adversary to return some alpha, alpha prime in, in brackets such that it holds that alpha in the group 1 times 1 in the group 2 equals 1 in group 1 times alpha prime in group 2. So basically, we assume that uh, in group T, uh, these elements are, are equal. Okay? 
then uh, then we we say that alpha equals alpha prime, and then there exists an extractor X such that if we run this extractor along with uh, with the adversary, then we can get we can get alpha. And for that, we actually need uh, asymmetric pairing because this assumption doesn't hold in, in a symmetric set. Mm. So as I said, we, we will need to extract trapdoor from, um, from the subverter, so we need to, to make sure that in CRS we can compute both yota in group 1 and yota in group 2 for every, every yota in, in a trap. Okay, so that's how we make sure that uh, that the simulator gets gets the correct trapdoor. So let me show how to check that the CRS is is well formed. So subverter cooperates with the verifier, and the idea is that to give a prover an algorithm that will check that the CRS is is well formed. So. Um, we define an uh, additional algorithm called CRS verification, CV, not very fancy name. Um, and this uh, algorithm doesn't uh, have any, any superpowers. Basically, it can do only what prover can, can, can do. So it can uh, add the group elements or make, make pairings. Right? Um, and this, uh, this algorithm needs to be run only by, by the prover, because that's the party that is interested in, in zero knowledge. We want to make uh, CV uh, as efficient as possible. Uh, so we think that roughly the time, if the time needed to verify the CRS is roughly the time that is needed for a prover to give a convincing proof, then, then we are fine. Okay, so um, how CRS is generated in this uh, original growth uh, 2016 paper? So first we generate a secret trapdoor that contains of five elements. We compute a common reference string. And, and this, uh, this common reference string is divided into uh, three parts. So basically the first part is CRSP. It's a part of CRS that is used only by, by the prover. And the other part is CRSV, that part used only by the verifier. And we actually needed to add uh, CRSCV, that additional CRS, that will allow us to, to extract a trapdoor for the simulator and will allow uh, the CV algorithm to check that CRSP is well formed. So um, how CRS verification looks like? So the setting is that uh, we have uh, Trapdoor elements that are secret, but they usually known in exponents. And we have some polynomials, ui, vi, wi, that are publicly known. Like here we have these polynomials, but uh, it's not known their values on, uh, on a secret <laughs> key. Okay, so our checklist is as follows. So, do we divide by zero? Okay, we have some elements that cannot be zero in the CRS. Um, we have also elements like this beta here that should be uh, represented in, in both groups. So we need to check uh, whether if, uh, if the subverter claims that this uh, element is equal to, to this element, like the, the value hidden in uh, both uh, groups are, is the same, um, we need to, to, to check that this, this statement is, is true. And of course we need to check whether all uh, polynomials were evaluated at the same, the same point here. Okay. So how CRS verification look like? So as I said, we need some additional help. And this help is this CRS CV. Uh, it contains elements like, for example, alpha in group 2 that is necessary uh, to, to be able to, to extract alpha uh, from, from the CRS. On the other hand, we have also Lagrange polynomials uh, that makes, uh, makes verification really, really efficient. OK, 
Okay, so our checklist. Uh, do we divide by zero? And that's uh, checked uh, really, really simple, simply. So we basically check that uh, elements that shouldn't be zero are not a zero, zero elements, right? Uh, if we need to check whether two, two group <laughs> elements uh, carry the same value, um, then we use uh, the same equation we used for, uh, for the knowledge assumption. So we check whether yota times one equals one times yota prime. And we also need to check that all uh, polynomials are evaluated at the same point. So we have uh, two types of polynomials basically here. First uh, are consecutive powers of he, and it's checked by, by pairing uh, he to i times one equal he to i minus one times he. And we need to check all these polynomials ui, uh, vi, wi, and this is checked by, uh, by evaluating this, these polynomials uh, using Lagrange basis. Okay, th so that's uh, how we check that CRS is, is well formed. So uh, the CRS has the correct form, the, the simulator knows exactly the same trapdoor as, uh, uh, as the subverter used to, to create the CRS, so, so we, can, we can simulate. Uh, let me tell something about soundness. So, so uh, this uh, Groff snark is knowledge sound, and it's proven in a generic group model. So generic proofs uh, in generic group model highly relies on uh, what is in the CRS and what's not in the CRS. So basically, if you add some element to the CRS, you can easily have a situation that, uh, that the security doesn't hold anymore. Um, so, and we, uh, we, in fact, added some elements to, to the CRS. So we, we, need to, we needed to, to reprove uh, soundness. Mm, so Groff snark is secure for for symmetric setting also. So so basically in the symmetric setting G1 equals G2 and uh, these parts of CRS that are represented in one group are the same uh, in, in in both groups. So uh, mm, so the, the CRS is like uh, contains more more elements and we preserve we preserve this this property. Okay, so uh, let me tell something about efficiency. So we implemented uh, our verification algorithm on a, a not very powerful machine. It's like five-year-old laptop. And the implementation was done in C++ in a Lipsnark library. And I will show some numbers uh, for the circuit size. Uh, so we have circuit size up to half of a million input size, this input size of, of, uh, of, of prover is 1,000 and all times are given in seconds. So basically what we can read from this table is that the time needed to, to verify the CRS is roughly uh, even uh, smaller than the time uh, needed uh, for, for prover to give uh, a convincing, convincing proof. Okay, so... Uh, let me make a short uh, commercial break. So if you are bored with your snark or you are worried about CRS uh, generation, please don't and use our framework to, to give your snark subversion resistance for basically free. And our framework is well fitted for snarks. It's suitable for zero knowledge and doesn't require any change in the original simulator. Uh, it's well fitted from snarks. And it's efficient and, and really easy. Just add CB algorithm. Okay. So, um, so let me conclude. We proposed uh, new definitions for subversion resistant framework, and this definition uh, covers statistical zero knowledge. Um, it also gives uh, one simulator for all subverters, and on that only extractor uh, depends on, on the adversary. We took the most efficient SNARK for QAP and made it subversion resistant. Uh, we shown that the CRS does not need to be trusted by the prover and uh, the CRS can be efficiently verified. Thanks for your attention.
sure everyone is hungry, but we have time for one question, maybe. Jens, maybe, no? Uh, Help me out. I'll, 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 sure. I'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I guess my, my question is whether you've looked at, at other SNARKs. Is this sort of a general framework that applies in all sorts of SNARKs, or is it specific just to this uh, 2016 SNARK? Um, so the, the CV algorithm itself uh, has to be like uh, suited for, for particular SNARK, but the framework is general. We, uh, we use the, the same framework to show that uh, Pinocchio is, uh, is subversion resistant, and some, uh, some later implementations of Pinocchio that m made it a little bit more efficient. And we also shown that your, your recent snark with, uh, uh, from crypto, sorry, don't oh, recall yeah, the character, yeah, yeah. is also subversion resistant. <coughs> okay, so that concludes our morning sessions. So let's thank the speaker again.